Welcome to another installment of Mass Monday. For people who think that's sacrilegious, uh, wait a minute. Just watch yeah, the entire yeah. show. Yes. And that's even Brendan from yeah, the edit yeah. bay. Well, so yeah. he's yeah. not a member yeah. of the clergy. Right. Yeah. He was not offended. And the outfit was very cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and it's dry ice, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes. So it's not really It was a safety stuff. hazard. Yeah. So we would never put a cardinal at risk. No. Of course. Right. Mm -mm. Mostly we because never. we could never find a cardinal to set foot in the studio. Nope. <laughs> so uh, this is continuing. Audio Aid is here. Gerald A. Quarter Black Garrett. Continuing on the sort of Rhett and Link saga. Right. Received uh, quite a bit of response letters yeah. <laughs> slash comments. No one actually writes physical letters. Yeah. But they you, they so, do, honey. but it's mainly just anthrax. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like every I time I get, get a physical letter, I open it and I just aim it in the general direction of Brendan and go, <laughs> and <I> go <laughs> like fairy dust. You just don't appreciate a good gift. I no, I, <laughs> I, more so that I don't like being surprised. <laughs> it's face powder. It's so just face powder. Um, we're going to get into Rhett and Link a little bit, and I want to be clear. Uh, uh, very much ap appreciate Rhett and Link what they do. I yeah. can appreciate their position that they're stepping out. I do think it takes some courage to talk about their yeah. sort of abandoning of, of, of faith and their sure. crisis of faith. Uh, doing my best to keep this uh, really as brand friendly as possible. Which brings me to the question: uh, <laughs> Let me ask you: Is brand friendly or even sort of mainstream audience friendly, something the idea of that, something that Christians should value at all? Is there a biblical prescription as it applies to living your life so that others around you like you? Let me know what you think. Popularity, making sure that you're polite, that people like you because you're nice. Is that something that is a value inherent to um, the Christian faith? Mm -hmm. And if so, where does it sort of uh, take uh, precedence over other yeah. values? Um, and this, of, of course, is we thought it was over after the last Mass Monday, mm -hmm. yeah. and then Rhett and Link's angry, I believe, lesbian producer. Uh, it's very uh, alleged. I don't know. It's not relevant other than the fact that she, that's probably a huge portion of why she's angry at me. Well, oh, specifically, uh, sure, yes. yes. Yeah. Had this to say. This is the change my mind meme, and that's Steven Crowder, or as I like to call him, Steven piece of sh Crowder. He's a <laughs> podcaster at TCU who sat outside with a sign that said, male privilege is a myth change my mind, and the meme is used to convey strong, hot takes on topics that are actually important or completely unimportant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see a few examples. And I do appreciate Rhett and Link avoiding it. You know, Rink, yeah. Link with the, the chip on yeah. like, I'm uncomfortable, <laughs> and then Rhett with the laugh. Like, is it okay for me to laugh at it? I'm not going to be demonetized. Don't worry. You won't. Your views are safe. Which <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> brings us to kind of a point that I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is sort of a chant that we hear quite a bit. From mm -hmm. sort of a mantra, and you were talking about this audio wave, yeah. so feel free to chime in at any sure. point. Um, Rhett and Link, they continually talk, and it seems to be a value that is very important to them personally um, as well as professionally, and that's the idea of being popular, being brand friendly. Here you go. We know we're kind of the poster boys of, of the trending page in, a, in sort of a the why are these guys always trending that hmm. that question because sure. it isn't because our videos get if you look at the trending page most videos will have more views than what we that we've got up there right Interesting. but i think that it's, it's not a bad this is all speculation <laughs> <laughs> because we upload at the same time every single day oh. 6 a.m eastern people time every that. single day and you don't really have to be subscribed to know that it takes off really really quickly and i think the mm. algorithm just interprets it as a lot of people are interested in this video, even if it's our Good Mythical More, which is our sort of like second channel show sure. after the show, that may get two or three hundred thousand views. They think trending is a still algorithmic, right. as opposed right. to a and person going, trend "Let's uh, before pace the this main here. episode." Oh, wow. And so I think it's just based on it gets thrown into the system, and they're like, "Oh yeah, Rhett and Link, they're brand safe. Put them up there." That's the other thing. I think I don't know, but I think that there's some sort of a mm. white listing. Ooh. Where it's uh, racist, you have yeah. a heightened eligibility <laughs> to be on the trending Listing. page, based purely on just brand friendliness. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's what they care about the most, right? They yeah, they got to get the brands involved, and if they know consistently, I mean, it's we got seventeen hundred. What you episodes care about the most, <laughs> and we'll get to that. And in if a you know, especially over that track record, there's that they can trust that. Okay, we're gonna we're not gonna do anything to invite backlash from brands. Sure, 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 sure. And now you might hear that in context. Sure, 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 sure. That's what matters. Sure, 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 sure. Advertiser friendly, YouTube, yeah, brand friendly. Yeah, we get it. We're all on board. And you might hear it at first. 
<laughs> you sound like a Muppet guy. Yep, 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 yep. You might hear it in them sort of feeling, uh, yeah. you know, bemoaning, like, oh, being brand safe. Yeah. But th- th- that's not. First off, I appreciate their, um, I guess, candor, like maybe the YouTube trending is uh, actually curated by people. Mm-hmm. And they then we believe naive. there could be perhaps <laughs> a white listing of brand friendly as though they've never mm-hmm. heard of the Vox Apocalypse. Right. I mean, or on. yours truly, despite calling me a piece of <laughs> which I'm okay with. I'm cool with that. Um, I think this comes down, you know, we need to be honest with our audience. Of yeah. course, the trending page is not what it used to be. It's not based on most popular, most viewed, most discussed. And uh, of course, there is a white list and there is shadow yeah. ban. YouTube right. has been very clear about that. They've yeah. talked yeah. about that and mentioning me by name at the yeah. Recode conference. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I want to make sure that we're very clear on this. If uh, Rhett and Link uh, would like to learn more about that, we have plenty of documentation. Plenty. Uh, but to go back to the point that it may originally seem, and this is what I, I do want to focus on in a biblical perspective, because they sort of tie in their their ideas beforehand of how they lived their life into a biblical right. perspective and why they left, which is just, I would disagree with because I don't think it's a biblical perspective. We're no, talking about brand know. friendly and the idea of uh, appealing to a mass audience regardless of what requires yeah. uh, that, uh, what what is required to be appealing. But here you right, go. Yeah. Uh, I think this is another clip just so you have some context echoing again this sort of overall sentiment in their content. At the YouTube live event. Yeah. And it was the first time we all got together yeah. I was, you know, I said we felt like outsiders because we weren't we weren't connecting with the community in the way that a lot of creators were. Um, I also felt, I think we. I know what that feels we like. We sensed that we were missing <laughs> because you think we you were felt so on the outside. Um, fundamental. And what I the hell think does that, mean? that if you had an interaction with us, and I'm, you know what, maybe, maybe, what, maybe you remember. I had this thought that like people can tell that we're different and we would usually say that in a good way. It's like people can tell that we're different and that's us being a witness for us having a relationship with Jesus, okay? Jesus. But it was also this, people can tell that we're different because we're, we're uptight. I think we're judgmental. People think that it's that, oh, they moved to LA and they got liberal. You know, they gave up their faith. Yes. You know, I mean, well, you could also pretty, blame it on much. YouTube because many years before, yes. it's like, I mean, <laughs> in a very good way, it, it expanded. Yeah. Well, I don't blame it on YouTube. I, I blame it on the people who, um, YouTube gonna YouTube. But I do yeah, right. place the blame squarely on the shoulders, and this is also a biblical principle of personal responsibility and, and, and being judged for one's own actions, uh, trying to appeal to the overlords at YouTube. I know what they're Absolutely, talking about yeah. as far as uh, as far as feeling on the outside. Right. Um, I've never once been to a VidCon. I, uh, I feel like you're yeah, on, uh, as far on the outside as you could possibly be. Yeah, I'm that um, original uh, uh, so, Disney cartoon, Mickey Mouse with the hobo out in the yeah, cold while they're yeah, doing the like, Thanksgiving uh, dinner. I got lots of oh, views there's here. There's no happy ending, no one lets me in. <laughs> oh, They just <laughs> Spoiler open alert, the door, right? say, you wanna come in? Take my cash, say thanks, there you go. close yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we won't run the ads that we wrote for you. Right, um, and I think this is important. We'll go back to some more clips uh, a little bit later on. This is that you know that you've heard the term probably uh, argumentum ad populum or appeal to popularity. It's an, first off before we get to the spiritual, it's an intellectual fallacy. It is yes. Um, in talking about how this matters or how this is important or how maybe people didn't like us because we were uptight and judgmental. Myself, uh, I make judgments. Certainly not uptight. Uh, you can see just the uh, <laughs> the wardrobe choices that I've made on this program out of necessity because yeah. we don't have the budget uh, for a sketch. Yeah. Well, um, took one for also, the team. by the way, this shrunk. This shirt shrunk. No, uh, no, it didn't. No barbell nipples. It just shrunk. You can see it's an XL. Maybe we can zoom on it, but I feel great shame. I sewed all the XL fault. labels yes. on the large shirts that you asked me to. Exactly. Did I do yeah. it wrong? Yeah, it's like John yeah. Edwards where he gets suits from Armani and sews in JC Penney. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly right. <laughs> I just have man breasts. Um, <laughs> so is there, outside of the idea intellectually, that really you can't use that as an argument at all, uh, how many people receive you a certain way? That doesn't necessarily mean that they're right. There can be yeah. the majority of any group, any country, any historical class, and they can be wrong. We've seen that time and time again. Yeah. So YouTube can be wrong, and I would argue they are. Um, <laughs> Spiritually, yes. is there any biblical basis yeah. for this? And I wanted to talk about this. Right. What are the dangers of basing your faith uh, or even your lifestyle around 
appealing to popularity. Yeah, audio wave. Yeah, well, they also use that same argument when they're talking about uh, the church needing to accept, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, gay marriage and things right. like that. Which I think we have another clip. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. So uh, it, the, their argument on populism is essentially their worldview. Their yes. worldview is yeah. the appeal to authority. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, that's all no, I was going to say. We will go back to that clip. And we have some verses here to yeah. get into because I think this right. is something that this sort of, I, I've always said it does a great disservice, unfortunately, um, to Christianity when you whitewash it. So a lot of people saying, like, yes. when, if you just say, God is just, God is love. No, no, God, of course, loves everyone, right, as Christians. And again, this is Mass Monday, so for people who are angry atheists, I see you in the comment section. <laughs> Cool. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> yeah. But you well, know, this isn't beer, necessarily relax. for Thanks you. For the uh, but that's okay. We want to have yeah, you around yeah. so you can tell us why you think we're wrong. But God loves all of his children. We are all right. his children. But that does not mean that God is only love, that that's the only value that matters. Discernment yeah. matters. Um, obviously, judgment does matter. And the idea that you should be loved by everyone is, of course, untrue. Well, and they danced around some topics here, uh, going back through the, the two clips that we played. The first one was dancing around the obvious elephant in the room of, yeah, I don't know, really why our videos show up on the trending page as much as they yeah. do. I mean, I mean, ignorance is bliss, I, wonder I guess. why you know? YouTube might feel it useful to have a large yeah. channel that uh, basically says Christianity is wrong until right. they allow LGBTQ yeah. pa pastors and Boy I just Scouts. don't get it. But I it, don't understand why they're so friendly to us. I'll take a wild guess. Right. Um, <laughs> well, in the second, the second video, real quick, uh, yeah. he said that they had 1,700 videos of a track record that, that showed that they were going to be brand friendly. And, and I don't say this out of anger towards them, but in this conversation that's been started, are you telling me over 1,700 videos you've never taken a stand that was unpopular? You have tried to mm. conform your I think they realized recently, worldview. unfortunately, in calling me a piece of sh they were surprised that they right. ended up not being... Uh, not being seen as champions that, of the good guy at that point. Certainly <laughs> not the little guy. What of consequence are you talking about over 1,700 videos that doesn't make someone uncomfortable or mad at you? Hot wings are hot! I mean... Um, <laughs> yeah. I also... Not to say that it's pedestrian or inconsequential. No, I'm just saying... There's a place for that as well. Right, I, I'll give you this that. This is too. my problem that I've always had with the watering down of, of, of Christianity. You mm -hmm. say God is love. God loves his children, of course. And you can, He's can talk about God stuff. is love. God is all of the things. Yeah. But it's really easy. And this is why you need an intellectual basis in your faith. It's really easy if you say, well, man, I don't care about all the rest of that stuff. God is love. And then it's easy for atheists. And at one point, you know, when, when people really were using the Hitchens, uh, sorry, Christopher Hitchens, not Peter Hitchens. I know sure. you're <laughs> Christopher Hitchens' arguments like, well, God has killed more people yeah. than all governments. That's absolutely true. If you read the Old Testament, it's an R-rated film. And that's not because God yeah. doesn't love, but that's because God is also just. just. And God yeah. understands. Yes that certain, certain times in history require certain appropriate levels of punishment. So just whitewashing Christianity with the Rob Bell or even the prosperity gospel, it's too easy to poke holes in. And unfortunately, I think that some of that might have been the basis of a lot of Rhett and Link's faith because yeah. that's a lot of young Christians. And then that's a really easy transfer to sort of moral ambiguity, situational it ethics, yeah. uh, which is where we see them now. Well, and I think that it comes out of the whole God is love thing. Would you, by the way, would you want to serve a God that was unjust, that didn't punish wickedness, right. that didn't reward, um, you know, doing the things that he asks you to do? And, and there's a really quick answer to this. No, nobody around the world would. I thought you were going to, I thought that was going to be a surprise. Like, no, a really no. quick answer to this. Really quick answer. It depends. No. <laughs> right? Oh. Well, think about it this way. He's going to go into a Dom DeLuise impression. No. <laughs> I mean, C.S. Lewis made this argument. Why? You don't have to teach a child that stealing their toy is a bad thing, right? You sense un injustice, right? When an unjust situation occurs, it offends you, even as a child, as a toddler, before you're taught anything. You know that that's if someone else steals your toy. Unfortunately, yeah. children can steal other people's toys and they don't feel yeah. it. That's, so true. that's why we need that's Christianity true. in the but first place. <laughs> so, hey, he took my toy, but you took his toy. Yeah, but I want this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're evil little monsters. Um, so <laughs> I, I'd like to get into for, kind of focusing on this idea that is there a biblical basis right. at all to wanting to please as many people as possible or being as brand friendly as possible? Possible. Um, I think we have a couple of verses yeah. here, Gerald. If you or audio, wait. If you want to audio read the first, wait, one. go for it. Yeah. So Luke six twenty six. Woe to you, and all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. What? Pretty rough stuff. Uh, Galatians <laughs> one ten. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. All right. No. Let me have Gerald read the other one because he's got, he's got buttered right? radio. John fifteen sex eighteen to nineteen. <laughs> if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. 
person. Right. And I want to be clear. This doesn't mean that you should that if you're a douchebag, the Bible right. saying, don't, go get him. Don't to go. strive to be hated. No, don't right, strive yeah. to be hated. But here's a good example. Yeah. Christ did not strive to be hated. No. But, but he was Christ reviled. was steadfast oh, in what he believed. The Pharisees, Sadducees, the ruling class of the day. And by the way, while we're talking about this, we'll come back to YouTube. You cannot name me a government or a ruling class more powerful than the companies that are Facebook, Alphabet, Amazon, Apple. Yeah. No. Right now. You can't. Twitter, I mean, they kind of like, hey, guys, us too. No, yeah, no Jack no. Dorsey. <laughs> but the truth is, and they, all, and, and they are, yeah. and here's what also matters, they are also um, enabling and they are also uh, accessories to other governments outside of the United States. Oh, yeah. And we'll this get particularly matters is we'll get into China a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But Jesus offended the ruling class. It wasn't just religious. It wasn't just pious religiosity. Right. It was effectively a socio-political ruling class with the Pharisee said. So he didn't go in and say, like, ha ha, your robe is funny. It sucks. Where'd you get that at? Gazar fa- Pharisees? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking, Nicodemus. You're all right. No, he didn't do that. No, no. But when they that asked him and he said, I am, that's about as offensive as you can yeah. get when Jesus says, no, this is this is absolutely what I believe. I'm not going to change it. And inherently, that created a rift. That came with hatred of some, right. not all. Well, he knew that truth would divide people. And so that's why in one of the verses, we didn't quote this one here, but he says, I didn't come to unite, but to divide. He wasn't saying like, I've right. come to be a division among you. He was came, I came to give you truth. And I know that truth is going to divide you guys because people are not going to accept it. Yeah. Right. And it's going to make them very angry. I'm not going to do it in an unloving way. But I am going to be truthful, and I'm going to take a stand. So you're well, saying I mean, that crucifixion was kind of the first demonetization? That really was. <laughs> yeah. Well, go, yeah. Going back to uh, <laughs> going back to what Gerald said. Jeez. If if you've made that much content and have made some, nothing that people disagree with, right. or that rubs brands yeah. the wrong way, then you don't have any standards. Yeah. And yeah. if there's that much content are you is like taco bell your ultimate morality standard like whether <laughs> right. they're gonna yeah. whether they're gonna monetize your video that's a silly way of viewing well, content you can just say it you can just say look we want to make money and so we don't take stands on issues yeah right you can just be very honest with and, and who you and are I be clear. maybe they maybe they don't have stands on issues so i want to be maybe i don't want to attribute motive yeah. maybe they don't have any fundamental worldview that they're willing to stand up for, and so they're fine, they're totally brand-friendly. I don't know. We just know that they right. aren't taking any stands. Well, but they were right. Christians before well, they went to But they weren't taking stands LA, openly right? as Christians. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. if, if they were Christians I watched them and not back taking any stands... It was very stands. much the whole agape, Los Angeles, Christianity yeah. brand of love, yeah. which, again, is more easily right. transferable, like, uh, you know, your your rewards points with no blackout dates. <laughs> if it's feel-good, God is love, is yeah, much right. more easily transferable to, you know what, I just want to make everyone feel good by not offending anybody yeah. and that also so happens uh, to conveniently land you on the trending page and land you in the good graces of YouTube by yeah. the way that's also yeah, a logical fallacy the idea that right. well Taco Bell you this is also something when you're talking about appeal being brand friendly you're talking right. about appealing to brands that through the selection process inherently share one worldview you want to tell right. me that exactly. Walther yeah. that Smith and Wesson that uh, I don't know to take take your pick of a litany of these companies uh, wouldn't want to run ads on of YouTube they, right? they're, preclu- yeah. they're they're excluded yeah. they're not yeah. Allowed to, well, yeah. therefore, brand friendly is appealing yeah. to the brands who are allowed by Wojcicki mm-hmm. and Yeah, and, and yeah. Rhett has a, a medium, art, um, several medium articles. One of them is against guns, and he has mm-hmm. others that are so uh, that are right. basically just pure white guilt stuff. So it's like it really you again. If, white if guilt you, is white listed. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So if if yeah. you speak a certain way, if you're going to speak on issues, it has to be about it this. Be, it doesn't. It can't necessarily be monetized on YouTube, but. Right. It's within the whole uh, paradigm. And, and here's something, too, I want to be clear about. It's totally fine if someone has a point of view that we don't share. For Certainly, example, if he's anti-firearm, yeah. um, that's fine. And you yeah. can have a discussion about that. But at a certain point when you say, hold on a second, I have spoken out against firearms. I have clearly spoken out against the church for not, uh, rec- or most churches, for not recognizing same-sex marriage or right. allowing yeah. gay people in positions of authority. By the way, same thing with promiscuous uh, members of the church are not allowed. If you're cohabitating at my church, if you're cohabitating with your girlfriend, you're not allowed to be a pastor. Yeah. You're not allowed to be a marriage counselor. Yeah. It's not allowed. That's So I want to be really clear. They've spoke, They've taken stands on those white? issues. Right. Yes, <laughs> even, even if you're white. Well, yeah. uh, don't reveal too much rules. from the secret meetings, okay? <laughs> uh, um, right. The robes, yes. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, we'll all show our branding marks afterward that <laughs> right. we got in front of Moloch. <laughs> uh, I, but he's clearly taken some stands. Yeah. yeah. Is there ever a history when you were a Christian or an atheist or agnostic ever a track record of taking a stand that may not be brand friendly. In other words, it's no risk yeah, to say I'm against firearms. Yeah. It's no risk to say allow LGBTQAAIP in the church. But I've got to imagine that every single person 
from far left Marxist communists to far right anarchists yeah. uh, have some views that are unpopular or not brand friendly. I can't imagine anyone going through 1700 right. videos without something that isn't brand friendly, whether it's the Pope, whether it's the Imam of Peace, whether it's yeah. our channel, whether yeah. it's Philip DeFranco, unless it is by design uh, inconsequential. Yeah, and I think it's just it shows a, a bit of a lack of awareness to the the system that they are playing in. It, it may be that they know exactly what they're doing, or that they may be just a little naive about it. But you you can't go through that entire process and say, well, we haven't ever done anything that would make brands not want to be a part of us or see backlash. And I, you need to be honest Which and brands? say what we've done has been so far to the left that nobody cares that we've taken those stances. Yeah, we haven't right. taken stances that are conservative right. that would get advertisers mad at us. Just be, and I would be much happier to see people be honest way, and say that. Anti-authoritarian, we'll get back to right. a little bit. Even example, middle of the road calling conservative. Calling out China for their human rights violations. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. you, can call out, uh, you can call out right to work states. How about saying for Taiwan work, is a for country work of its rights own. Violations, <gasps> but you can't call out China for yeah. human rights violations. Yeah, exactly. You can call out Michigan for being the 25th state to go right to work. No problem, not at all. You have an ad run on there for some kind of a non of the scrape, but you yeah. cannot say, hey, by the way, who is uh, effectively a propaganda arm of China, and yeah. they refuse to actually recognize any kind of sovereignty from Taiwan. Right. So I want to be really clear, it's not just right and left. There also is a component of right and wrong here. And my point is, if we want to talk about common ground, the division that is sowed is, is often because of YouTube uh, and because of big tech sort of acting as though there's this brand friendly, like this is the discourse that's allowed in, in a civil right. society. But the fact is, hold on a second, Black Rifle Coffee, Right, they sponsor the show because they All want to go against yeah, the grain right. because they don't want to sponsor those points of view. Right. But they have to come to us directly because a lot of these companies can't just get in the same YouTube branding program. Yeah. That yeah. is not a that's not an argument for a uh, foundational moral worldview. Yeah. And I would argue that historically that proves to actually be far more dangerous because there needs yeah. to be someone to speak up for people who can't speak for themselves. And I'm not just talking about yeah. LGBTQAIP, but I'm talking about people who are actually oppressed. We can get back to China and we can get back to everyone who's been demonetized, for example, on. YouTube. Hey, you have a big channel. What about documentarians who are liberal, who after the Vox apocalypse can no longer make money? A yeah. lot of people yeah. Yeah. need yeah. other folks to champion their cause, and that is your duty if you have a platform. We try to do it here. Sometimes we fail. Uh, I right. think we should probably go. Did you want to say something? I was just going to say, it's it's not just brands in general. It's just the brands that have been chosen by YouTube. Right. right. So there is a selection yeah. process, and that, and that's the issue. But also, it's not just brands. It's uh, there it seems to be that their worldview is shaped a lot by just people who use YouTube. Yes. And I, and I think that's actually yeah. the next clip. And this is actually, so here's another clip where, um, and honestly, I, like I say, I say this with a, with a heavy heart and, you know, listen, obviously I know I make fun of people a whole lot more. I'm trying to avoid doing that with Rhett and Link just because I would love to obviously speak with them and, and I'll make fun of them some other day for things that are relatively inconsequential, but I don't want to twist the knife if they feel alienated because of their worldview. So yeah, yeah. if you're feeling like you're seeing a different side of me, it's because I'm, 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 I'm being good. Um, <laughs> They couldn't be, this is so sad, more obsessed with what other people think about them. That is the basis, because that also determines how they view themselves. If you don't believe me and you don't think this is sad, here's another clip. First thing you do when you wake up. Roll over, pick up my phone, and build my self-image from the YouTube comments. Oh. Uh, first thing I do when I wake up is roll over, see if Rhett's texted me because his self-image is being shattered by YouTube comments. Yep. Every day. Now, let me be really clear here, by the way, because um, you could lob this criticism at me. When I wake up, um, and actually I will say when I wake up, I try and do my devotionals first uh, yeah. and often make some coffee, try and take some time, and I do, I, I do pray because that's a big part, of, big part of what makes me me. But even the first thing I do, when I go into my email or I go into our, our, our drive to look at show maps and, and, and research, the last thing on my mind is hey, what did people think about me? In other words, you know, I don't read the comment section. Right, yeah. You guys have instructed, yeah. I'm not supposed to because it can, because specifically this can happen. What I am doing is going, okay, what inaccuracies, injustices, or need to know information do I have to work on today to best serve our audience? It's not, how can the audience best serve my ego or determine right, yeah. my moral worldview so that I'm still under the brand friendly umbrella and make the YouTube trending list. So there's a big difference between wanting to do your job well, wanting to serve your audience well, and wanting to shape shift in order in order to, frankly, maximize the, the pat on the back ego stroke that your audience provides you, which is why right, it's yeah. sad to me, because that'll always be fleeting. Yeah, it, it's never going to lead you to a good place. And historically, we've seen that just following after popular opinion 
it doesn't normally lead to a more edifying, more loving, more accepting, more truth centered world or a freer world right. at all. And so there's this, you know, saying in Latin vox populi vox day, sorry for saying vox. I apologize. I hope it doesn't you know, do anything. <laughs> okay. Um, but basically I'm Rambo. No, I know, right? <laughs> 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 I could see you doing that. Uh, no, um, but it, basically this concept that the voice of the people is the voice of God, right? And that seems to be where Red and Link might be leaning, right? Because they've talked about how they've, you know, mm -hmm. we, we went through the deconstructing their faith and that's what started all this, obviously. And Please don't use that they, word. Uh, I know, I'm using their word. I'm quoting them. I refuse. Um, <laughs> leave it, they left their faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so this, this has kind of become their worldview in place of that because they've said they haven't gone to anything else. They're not now Buddhists or Taoists or whatever, yeah. you know, they're just kind of out there. And so really it's like, well, what's popular? What is What are the people saying? And I think there's a, a strong point to be made here. Look, there's nothing wrong with being successful. There's nothing wrong with being rich. Of course not. There's nothing wrong with being popular. There's something wrong with seeking these things as your priority, right? right? Anytime you place anything above God, no matter what it is, right? You can place family above God and that would be a problem. You can, yeah. you can do a lot of things, but that's where things get out of whack. And I think yeah. that's what we're I seeing. Even, uh, and I want to go to wait, but I even felt that as a kid, one of my favorite Christmas films of all time is Muppet Christmas Carol. And it's actually, despite the Marley brothers, because of the thicket fit in the hecklers yeah. as the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, despite that, it's actually one of the most accurate renditions of Christmas Carol yeah. uh, that I've seen. But there is a song where Michael Caine says, uh, if, well, he sings, but it's really like Pierce Brosnan. And, my yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, and if you want to know a measure of a man, you simply count his friends. It's that yeah. flat. Yeah. <laughs> And I was as a kid going, simply count his friends. And as a kid, it bothered me. I said, yeah, well, huh. hold on a second. Jesus had no. few friends and a lot of people who wanted him dead. Yeah. So you've got to count friends as well as enemies. And some people have more friends and some people have more enemies. And it doesn't mean that they're necessarily morally right or wrong. But you shouldn't. To me, someone saying that's the metric of a man, how many friends yeah. hmm. um, bothered me as a yeah. kid. Yeah. Well, well and, and, and God's standards, the conven one convenient thing about them is that they don't change. Right. And mm -hmm. that the voice of the people is always changing. And so if, you, if, yeah. if your standard is always changing, that's exhausting. <laughs> right. But, yeah. but, God, but God's, God's standard, again, is consistent and it does actually lead to flourishing. It leads to healthy psychology and all the rest. And, hold on. That's a really good point. I want to mm -hmm. because we also have a clip uh, specifically from Red and Link for that. I, I find it really interesting that some people are making that argument and, and one thing I saw said, it's too late for Rhett and Link, mostly because of this LGBT thing. Once they've gone there, wow. it's too late for them. And I'm like, can't you see that you guys have lost this argument? History is going to leave you behind. You know, because something even is the most conservative right. denominations a hundred years from now, no, no one except these, uh, like a fringe cult is gonna be anti-LGBT in 100 years. It's just, if you just look at history and the way things progress culturally, eventually the church says, okay, we'll incorporate that too because if we don't, we're going to die. Um, but I think because the church is being really slow to do that and it's kind of causing an existential crisis and a crisis of just the way that they see the Bible, mm -hmm. the young people are just saying, I'm, I'm out. I, I'm not going to be a part of this. But hold on a second. Maybe if young people are the young people like you, that doesn't cause yeah, someone right, like me to yeah. say, I'm out from the Bible, because guess what? It doesn't force me to relook at the Bible at all. Mm -hmm. The idea of progress, uh, first off, progress changes. Yep. You change direction yeah, of yeah. progress. You can look at times where we were uh, far more left and far more talented. Even you can just look at, a lot of people don't realize this, if you look at fashion, throughout the yeah. United States. So for example, we think of the 50s or, uh, as a really conservative era. You can mm -hmm. look at that, that was hyperly sexualized. We right. enhanced the hips and the looks and yeah. the breasts. I don't know what was going on with the pointy cone boobs, but whatever. That was yeah, weird. Quite and then we had the 60s that. and the 70s where we changed that. We actually, we made men look like women and men wore bell bottoms and yeah. tighter yeah. tops because it was kind of a feminist revolution. Then you look at the 80s where it went the other way. We had shoulder pads and all of a sudden we went to women looking more masculine. Yeah. You know, th th these things change. Standards of modesty change. The yeah. idea of LGBTQ AAIP changes as you can see by the acronym and for the first time in 10 years a more negative point of view this year than last year yeah. Yeah. of the lgbtq aaip movement so young people aren't just going to tune out because something is popular young people may tune yeah. out if they they hold a worldview that red and link did which wasn't the theologically and foundationally sound. and, and yeah. keep in mind that this entire movement started with 12 guys on a mountain so right. they, there's and it <laughs> yeah. wasn't the, it wasn't the like 
compromising with the surrounding cultural <laughs> stuff right. yeah, that ended up exactly. making the whole thing grow. Right. So the growth and change and things like that aren't, it's not an issue of compromise. Really, the only way to move forward and to grow is by being faithful. Right. Yeah. They didn't say, hey, does that, does that hill kind of look like a skull to you? Ah, I'm not sure. I think you're going to be killed on it. <laughs> I think that's going to be great for the religion. I mean, yeah. just, just picture it. If this Jesus is going to catch this, on. This yeah. will be a moment. Yeah. He said, like, it, in 200 years, a fringe cult won't believe these things. Well, but Christianity also, is 2,000 years. Right, but you also yeah. had a, mis, a misperception. This is also important where he was like, I, I, in the earlier video, we've talked about this, where he talked about uh, Michael Buckley, the what yeah. the buck guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was his thing. His catchphrase I know. Was, what Delightful. the buck. Oh. I was like, ah, it's not the gay thing, so but you don't have to be so gay. Um, that's it. That's my only one. The show. So uh, I do think if you interpreted that you were supposed to hate someone because they were gay, that was not at all a biblical interpretation. And if you're trying to say that won't be in the church 100 years from now, well, it's not in the church now. Yeah, it's right. not in the church now. It's never there have been bastardizations of it, but yeah. it's never been mainstream theology in the church that you are to hate anyone no and i but i don't i don't think that he's just saying that i think he's saying that it will be openly celebrated and accepted as normal and not sin right and i, I think that's the problem that we we have what kind of faith do we have if it just bends to our social will as time goes on right yeah. we have nothing we have something that can kind of move around and go well well at some point thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife is going to probably have to go out of style because you'll just be you know some random church and you'll Utah, die right because Utah. You know? have you <laughs> been to Utah that's, that's, as if that's in style <laughs> I know but <laughs> yeah. that's, this is the thing like some yeah, places <laughs> you, you've got to have an understanding that God's word is what it is yeah. and you can think what you want about it but you have to be honest about what it says so if he says, well, churches are just going to have to change. Well, you're not saying churches will have to change. Let's be very clear. You're saying God will have to change. Yes. And I want to be clear too. Us. This is also why the watering down of the faith, you know, yeah. I think someone said this as I can't claim credit for this. Someone said you can't water down medicine and then be surprised when it doesn't work. Yeah. That's why I think true. it's really wrong when you have a lot of preachers who go out there and they draw the line at LGBTQ AAIP, but they don't go out there and actively speak against, you know, living with someone before you're married. Materialism. Yeah. You may not be, but as a, it's it's not a part of the Christian faith. We yeah. are not to accept that as, uh, as something to be esteemed at the very least. That doesn't yeah. mean that we don't accept those people. Doesn't mean that those people aren't welcome to the 100%. church. Hundred percent. A heroin addict. Uh, yeah. A heroin. And I'm not comparing all gay people to heroin, but a heroin addict. Someone who dress a cross dresser and transsexual and gay person and person who is yeah. just living with his girlfriend for seven years. Who says it's just a piece of paper, baby? They are all welcome in the church. None of them. None of them are welcome in positions of authority to right, counsel right. others. Well, and, Jesus, and we need to draw that line yeah. before it gets to something that is culturally popular, like the movement du jour of the LGBTQ AAIP. Right. Um, well, and cut, Jesus, cut the line off before Jennifer Aniston uh, <laughs> adopts, what is it, Rachel on Friends, decides yeah. she wants to have a baby without yeah. a dad. Yeah, we should exactly. Draw the line, like, no, 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 that's wrong. Yeah. But for some reason, it's more acceptable to some Christians because she's attractive. Right. And, she's, and, and, and Jesus <laughs> actually set the standard for this. Like he was, he was actually accused or he was heckled essentially because he would be often found around sinners, prostitutes, and people who needed, and he basically made the comment, it's not the well that need a doctor, it's the sick. Like right. the people that are sick, is those are the people. So you don't shun these people groups from church. You just call sin, sin. That's it. You just say, hey guys, God says that these are the things that we shouldn't be doing to experience life in his system you that he designed. You cannot fix an issue. And the yeah. reason that, when people use the term sin, it's become a word that people don't like because it sounds judgy. But let's be clear, sin is a spiritual illness. It'd be like going yeah. to a doctor and a doctor wanting to fix you, but he's worried about actually diagnosing you. So in other words, if a doctor yeah. says like, ooh, well, we can fix you, but oh my gosh, what do we have to fix? Well, it's um, mm. it's something that's like, it's, it's growing, it's a, it's a uh, I don't want to talk uh, about it. Yeah. It's like, do I have cancer? That's not the word I want to use. So <laughs> It's going to make you sad. It's going to make you sad. sad. Yeah. It's the same thing. So when people say sin, like we yeah. need to address the sin, we need to recognize it as Christians so that we can all correct it. And by the way, Everyone is called to fix their own sin. Yes, we all have sin. It's not a bad thing, but you yeah. need to be able to diagnose the problem. You right. need to be able to assess the sin so that you can serve the sinner. Right. Otherwise, they are held bondage to sin for the rest of their life. This is what we've always believed as Christians. Yeah. And it's remarkable to me that that's become a problem now because people don't like to ever be reminded of the fact that we're all sinners. Sin. I mean, I probably <laughs> sinned 20 times. Not today, just, on this broadcast. Just on this broadcast, yeah. <laughs> well, and look, it, it goes back to, you know, going back to the popularity and kind of serving the mob. We we understand that that's not what we're supposed to do, even if, and we've talked about the monetary side of this, if you're making your show brand friendly so that you can get money, 
even if it costs you something, the Bible calls us to do what's right, right? And it goes back to the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, in Daniel 3.17. And this is just, it's one of my favorite verses because these guys basically are being called to bow down and worship before this king, Nebuchadnezzar. And, uh, and they say, they basically like, king, we can't do this. Um, and the king says that he's going to throw them into the fiery furnace. And then it picks up in verse 17. And it says, look, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But it, then it goes on and says, and even if he says, doesn't, so you're not going to do it. Going to do transgender yeah. makeup tutorials. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. That, that's exactly what it's saying. Like if you if you have a line in the sand, it may cost you something. Sure. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are making the point: we're not going to serve you above our God. We're not going to serve money above God. We're not going to serve family above God. We're not going to serve my job above God. Whatever it is, and even if it costs us something, we're willing to pay sure. the price. Our God's able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're still still not going to serve you. Right. And right? I'm not, just kind and of here's right the thing. The they may actually believe that this is sort of their, if they've abandoned God, that this is their new God right now, it, which it is a YouTube, be. the brand yeah. friendly. That being said, it's also mighty convenient. Well, there I are. Mean, it is yeah. mighty convenient that you work on YouTube and you've happened to abandon the God and the worldview right. that you thought maybe would hold you back from uh, appeasing your new golden calf and you two. Right. And even if they don't think of it in those terms, effectively, that is what it is. Like, you, who, who do you serve? Well, look at your behaviors. We don't talk about this because of this. We don't talk about that because of this. Well, that's who you serve. Right. You're serving YouTube telling you those things. And so what, what should we be doing? Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Incredibly simple. Don't yeah. be conformed to what this world does because they don't know good from bad. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. That's basically, that verse is saying, YouTube, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's pretty obvious. And by the exactly, way, while we're talking yeah. about this being brand friendly and this sort of crisis of, of, of faith and abandoning it and changing and, and progressing, let's kind of uh, go over um, the, 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 the quantifiable benefits, what it's gotten yeah. them. Um, YouTube funded their, uh, their half hour crypt scripted show. Hmm. Uh, YouTube paid them to make their show longer. It was an experiment that didn't really work out that well, but I appreciate Oops. the creative risk. Yeah. Uh, YouTube is, this is, keep in mind though, by the way, this is the same company that sunk millions of dollars into the Young Turks. Um, <laughs> so let's keep that in context. Sunk, sunk money into Retin Link and Young Turks, by the way. <laughs> We're still waiting mm. for our, our YouTube stimulus check. Um, <laughs> yeah, where my money at? What else? They, they've won. Oh, you got all of a sudden really black. Is this, nice. Oh, wow. Is this yeah. all of a sudden? Is this, uh, is this church it's night at the it, Apollo? You know you T.D. Jakes over there? <laughs> um, well. Actually, he's probably significantly whiter than the voice Hallelujah. that you just did. Uh, they won show of the year. Great. <laughs> Most recent, uh, the Streamy Awards uh, that are, of course, put on by YouTube. Oh. They presented the keynote address at VidCon a couple years back with YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki. Yeah. So, um... Mm. It's paid. It's it's paid dividends. It is definitely paid dividends with for this them. this very limited vertical that they've been very clear. It matters to them. Yeah. Um, and if that were as fulfilling as uh, the the actual, uh, I guess, sort of fulfilling your purpose uh, in how you were fearfully and wonderfully created by God, then it would then it would be worthwhile. Yeah. But I don't I, think that is the case, and we'll get to a clip afterward that that it sort of implies that they don't think it's the case. Mm. We yeah. about to say something there? I don't begrudge them. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. Wait, I, no, I don't no. begrudge them for being successful either. And I know you I don't, don't at either. All. It, it's in light of all of these other things. I think that's why we're bringing this out and saying, well, look, you guys, you guys are just bowing I, I down to I the authorities. I begrudge it being used as a justification. Right. It is. That's what it is for me. Yeah. I don't begrudge anyone being successful. I begrudge it when people use it as justification for actions, right. whether it's a successful government that, uh, or you know what, for example, let's use yeah. the wealthiest people in the world list. What is it? Uh, 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 I just, now I'm thinking T.J. Jake, something Slims, Carlos Slims. Yeah, the Mexican guy in guy. Mexico. Yeah, is he the wealth. He's not the wealthiest guy. It's he's Bezos, one of right? them. He's one of them. Yeah. And you have a bunch of Saudi. Uh, 10, you have a bunch of oil uh, sort of princes, sheiks yeah. that get from the Middle East. That's not the same as a Jeff Bezos. So when no. people, when we talk about this, I talk about it often. I don't begrudge Jeff Bezos no. at all for being wealthy. I have no problem with it because Amazon has improved my life. Right. I do begrudge people who make that wealthiest list if it's ill-gotten gain or yeah. if the justification yes. is, well, hey, who are you to criticize them? Look how rich they are. Well, no. I could also be rich if I simply was born into a royal family. <laughs> <laughs> that lived on a plot of land that right, yeah. raped the wealth from all of its citizens. Yeah. I don't begrudge anyone for being successful, and I don't begrudge anyone for making decisions that may uh, be totally in, out of alignment with my own. Right. I begrudge people using success 
their version of success as a justification. Well, and, and it is a big contrast between their approach and your approach. I mean, and the reason that you've been able to approach you think? You, yeah, the reason <laughs> that you've bit. been able to give the metaphorical middle finger. I don't know if you've given them a literal one, probably, but, but, but the metaphorical <laughs> uh, middle finger. Where's Cupertino? To you too. I hey. can't do it right now. But okay, yeah. sure. I don't sure. know. Again, I don't know what that's the spiritual issue we can do is giving the middle finger to evil YouTube. Is that wrong? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not entirely yeah. sure. But the reason you've been able to do that is because you have a higher standard outside of YouTube. It sounds like the, the way to get success in YouTube is to not have any other standards, yeah. not have any outside higher authority. Right. And I want to be clear. I know people will look at that and say, well, actually, you were uh, demonetized because you made fun of a, a gay Cuban Mexican guy. That's not yeah, why. That's actually not why. And if you look at we were we were obviously criticizing Vox. Oh, there's that word again. Uh, <laughs> both before and after and uh, videos that involved uh, the gay gentleman in question who called himself a uh, yeah. lesbian queer, um, yes. which is where it came from. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he said and it. without him in question. Yeah. So. I want to be really clear. That's not why. And even then, at that point, let's assume that that is wrong. Uh, you believe that's wrong. Let's assume you believe it's wrong. I am not going to apologize because you believe it's wrong. For example, when I say, hey, people who cohabitate, and I know there are a lot of people out there, and so you're going to feel, I'm not judging you in the sense that I, I think lesser of you. I probably do far worse things than that on a daily basis. But I am making the judgment that the book, I believe, the God I serve says, you know what, that's not, that's not how I want you to live because that's not what will lead to a fruitful life. I want you to find right. a wife because a man who finds a wife finds what is good. A women, I want you to be tender to your husbands, submit to your husbands, men, love your wives as, as Christ loved the church. Right, this is what I believe. So when I say, I'm not going to apologize because you think it's wrong. I'm, I'm not going to apologize because I say, I don't think that two guys, and I said this to Dave Rubin, Getting hitched up, the civil union, fine, states can do that. I support right. them doing that. Yeah. I'm not going to see that as the same as a, a mom and a dad with kids. Yeah. It's not the same yeah. relationship. I, you don't have to agree, but I'm not going to apologize because you think it's wrong. Because yeah. I don't think it's wrong, and that's what happened with YouTube. I don't think it's wrong. Um, I don't feel convicted by it being wrong. There's nothing in my biblical worldview or compass that tells me it's wrong. And the people, primarily, who are telling me it's wrong are very often evil. Like yeah. right now, Google, let's, we can rattle it off. They have a history of working with Chinese governments to censor information, suppress yeah. opposition. Uh, NBC, of course, we've criticized. They've been parroting Chinese COVID propaganda points as of late. Yeah. So when people yeah. who actually work with governments that all of their whistleblowers disappear. Yeah. Yeah. When a, an entity, a company works with governments that deny the sovereignty of a nation who wanted to simply be free, when they decide yeah. to acquiesce them because it's nice and brand friendly, I think that's evil and I won't apologize because an evil worldview, knowing or, knowingly or not, tells me I'm wrong. Yeah, and I, I, even if I disagreed with you completely and everything that you stood for, I would still be for you having a voice and a channel. Right. I right. may not want you to have as big of a reach or I may want to make sure I counter points that are wrong that you're saying or something like that. Feel but, free to do so. Well, <laughs> no, I'd have five people on a channel. We already lost the race. Passionate to that guy over there. Five people. Uh, but what I'm saying is that if you you end up kind of building a box for yourself and then you walk in and you close the door on yourself when you allow YouTube and other places like that to control yeah. what you say, because yeah. they're basically the one person saying, here is what's acceptable for our society to have as an idea. Right. And you made a point about this. If you, if you have kind of a multinational company and you start making the rules based on other countries, yeah. it gets even worse from there. And we saw this even with Facebook in China with the social score and Facebook yeah. being, you know, used to be able to help them give people social scores to see if they were supporting the party or not. It's like an episode saying, of Black Mirror, things. only it really not is. an episode of Black Mirror. It, it's it's just called real life, yeah. by the way. And they, you know, the no Miley Cyrus cameo, <laughs> the virus as well. Oh, no, I know Jessica no, Chastain really slash bad. Bryce Dallas Howard. I never can tell them apart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kinda, they doesn't the show up. Well, and and think of it this way. And, and this, you know, you always try not to say something that's so inflammatory. But think of somebody in in Germany, kind of at the right time to be able to stand up and say, wait a minute, maybe maybe free speech and saying that Jews aren't bad people is not a bad thing. It's the same principle. It may not be at the same point in the process, right. but it's the same principle. If you allow one organization to say, you can't talk about that. You yeah. can't say these things are good anymore. And you go, no, 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 that's fine. I'm fine. I'm going to jump right in the middle of this and just right. make money off your system. You become complicit and, in that system with some degree. This the whole time is if, to do, if tomorrow YouTube changes their policies and it's the complete opposite of what Rhett and Leak think, what does that do to Rhett and Leak's point of view? What is their worldview like? If all of a sudden they change, and I would, fight, yeah. and I, I would absolutely, and I hope that people understand that I've been, I would absolutely fight 
for the right to still be on the platform. Of course, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Without without a burp in my breath that after <laughs> having broadcast for 45 minutes was trying to yeah. find its way. I would support. I'm just, I'm getting the clumped. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. It, was, well a chi- it was a Chick-fil-A, yeah. which by the way, Chick-fil-A has been slacking lately at their drive through because they know there's no competition. Yeah. It's like Bill Gates coming over just whacking, oh, uh, whacking tables over and like, <laughs> Microsoft, Windows 98, it's the only option. Two <laughs> things, remind me to go back to the alt-right point okay. that's in my head because I don't have the best short-term memory right now. Alt-right. Um, YouTube has talked about this. You know, it's a very difficult struggle to find the balance between sort of international different forms of government. And this is something they've talked about openly. And uh, my worldview on that, my my point of view is you have to go with the laws and principles um, in the country in which you were founded, the United States. Why? Here's why. And this is the problem of, of, of situational ethics, or uh, what's the term that I'm looking for now? They don't use situational ethics. Uh, moral uh, relativism. relativism. Moral relativism. Yeah. 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 I always learned situational ethics when I was in school. Now it's more. New I'm words. Sure the same thing. But moral relativism. <laughs> if you say, well, we have to strike a balance. Well, if you're trying to strike a balance between different governments uh, who have wildly differing views on human rights, guess what? It will always end up debasing itself to the lowest common denominator. And what does that mean? That means that YouTube, Google, Twitter, Facebook, take your pick, zip tie me and hand me over to the Pakistani government so that I'm beheaded at a soccer game. Because there are official complaints from the government of Pakistan. I believe the government of Pakistan, the government of Germany, and the government of China for violating hate speech laws. So you have to either believe that free speech is absolute and that it's not a right that should ever be uh, trampled on. And you shouldn't even design algorithms uh, behind the scenes to try and change that even social interaction because you understand that a country that believes in those values is the one that has made your company valuable or lowest common denominator, (laughs) zip tie everyone who said something offensive on your platforms and hand them over to the sharks. Well, and the the laws of the country in which Google was founded is the reason that Google can exist and can succeed and has free speech is the reason that they've been able to grow as much as they have. Right. The reason YouTube exists. And I think being truthful, this is something too, while we were talking, while we're talking about the idea of, you know, if it's popular, we've also experienced this in just the conservative movement. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I've never been a member of the alt-right. Remember, they sort of came and went. And at some point, I was target numero uno. Listen, I wasn't a pro-Trump guy in the primary. Um, nope. I wasn't pro-Trump, honestly, for the first few well, first few months of his presidency. And then there were some turnarounds where I was going, oh, yeah. my gosh, I'm actually pretty impressed with this guy. Yeah. I haven't run from it. Uh, I've been pretty open about it. And there was a time, a point in time where when we weren't doing Pepe memes and weren't just being edgelords online or you know doing the... Uh, some of it wasn't a huge percentage, by the way, of people in the conservative movement, but unfortunately they dominated the conversation quite a bit online right, yeah. uh, and made it very difficult for us to go out and create content. And there, yeah. were, there was a period in time where we thought, you know what, this is the new conservative and it's not me. Nope. Uh, we didn't go along with it. No. And we still haven't gone along with it. And you know what, we're still here standing and uh, you can look at the through line and see that we have all been... Yeah. If, if not consistent, because views do change sometimes, um, certainly uh, at the very least, um, I guess you would say, you know where we stand and you know why we've changed a yeah. point of yeah. view. And there are very few point of views that have honestly changed with some people. Some people see it as a bad thing. It means you're inflexible. I don't. No, I mean, of course you're going to learn and grow uh, over time, but you're not going to flip-flop on issues like a politician would just to gain votes right. or popularity. Right. That's the, the biggest. Con- and so I, I want to go back to their, their process. Right, and they're thinking, you know, we, we didn't process? just move the out of to, checking them. We, yeah, well, their process their not of not of deconstructing because I would never say that, but yeah. of leaving, <laughs> <laughs> the, but of leaving the faith. Um, you know, the, the Bible talks about it when it talks about it's the just peril. I just hate the term deconstructing. I know, I know. It's, it's, like, it's like someone nailing, you know, know. It'd be like some kind of a, a Roman, right, entering in the, yeah. uh, or what am I, what's the term I'm looking for right now? Uh, the, the people who would have nailed the it, not the, the Roman, not centurion. Is Am I looking for centurion? Right, yeah, it's a centurion. Yeah. Yeah. The nails in. Was it centurion yeah. or is that a soldier? That's, that's Roman soldiers. Yeah. That's an Amex. Roman soldiers. <laughs> that's a card. <laughs> nailing in a cross being like, uh, you know, we're not calling this nailing anymore. Yeah. We're calling this uh, metal fun time. So there you go. Clank, 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 clank. We're adhering you to this. That is Rome right yeah, metal fun time. It is just, yeah. just rewording it something else, the right. deconstruction. The no, old, you yeah. are turning your back on Christ, yeah. which right. makes a father who loves you very, very sad. So I don't yeah. want to use that language right. because I think it diminishes, and I know that you were using it, because it diminishes the magnitude of what it is. Right. Yeah, exactly. the old word is ap- apostasy. Yes, right. it is. <laughs> it's it's just not very you know used it's anymore. Useful. Um, so really what happened is common, right? In the in Bible, it talks about the peril of the so- sower, basically where seed ends up in good ground, but root, or, you know weeds quickly come up and choke it out, right? Yeah. And I think what we saw with Rhett and Link more, I, I have to guess, I'm not judging, I'm not saying that this is 100% accurate, but it's kind of a story common to man. They went out 
to someplace else. They went out to Los Angeles to chase after a career. And there's nothing wrong with that. You went out there, you pursued a career, but then you started chasing after something more than you chased after God. You started chasing after what people thought, what people felt, yeah. uh, how you felt about how they felt about you and all of the things that come with that. And you started chasing after something more than God and you ended up leaving your faith. That's really what I, I think more happened. Than God, I would say chasing after something other than God. Yeah. Well, more meaning you, you spent more time chasing after that than God, because I don't oh, think yeah, originally they completely left, but they, they, they started putting something above God, whether they meant to or not. Right. And eventually it created such a chasm that they're like, well, wait a minute, maybe I don't really believe this anymore. Yeah. Maybe that foundation that I thought I had, I didn't really actually have. Well, well they, would, they would argue that the whole process started when they were back in North Carolina, but yeah. didn't, so didn't they start the when they were in L.A., but you've made that. Point. Yeah, I don't know that that's um, true. Uh, and I context. think that's probably true in the sense that these were probably people who eventually, if the right person came around, would abandon their faith anyway. Sure. Well, uh, the, but yeah, they, they thrust themselves into yeah. an environment seeking to be a part yeah. of that club that right. forces one to abandon their faith. <laughs> right. Yeah. They they moved from North Carolina to L.A. Right. L.A. didn't take them away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I moved uh, to Los Angeles and uh, had a pretty... You turned out okay. Well, no, I, I left. Remember, I was very... I was. Uh, it was a crisis of faith for me in the sense yeah. that I remember uh, sleeping out of my car and then sleeping out of Seymour's uh, uh, renovated apartment up on the top floor um, where I auditioned. I refused to audition for a film, and I think it was like a Lifetime film, mm. where basically it was like Good a gratuitous sex yeah. scene. No, yeah. really? no, no, I wasn't pushing a pregnant woman down a flight of stairs. Uh. That, that I probably... I would have done just because I'd be like, oh, uh. Uh, this is iconic. Um, <laughs> it's the Terrible. Lifetime scene. No, it was like a <laughs> oh, gay man. scene where I was basically like uh, having fellatio performed in a truck stop. And it was pretty graphic. What? And I said, I just, I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable doing this. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and keep in mind, I had just, I think I had auditioned not long earlier for like a scene that would have required me streaking. I was like, fine, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. like, There's nothing wrong with nudity. It's not titillating. This is not titillating. Yeah. Um, you, you auditioned and for my old agent at this point said, uh, well, you know what? I don't know if we're going to be able to work together if you refuse to work blue. I said, this yeah. is, it's literally blowing a guy at a truck stop on yeah. television. I just don't want to do this. <laughs> like, it's not like I'm eliminating everything. I'm pretty lenient, which to, to, uh, to my everlasting shame sometimes on this. Um, <laughs> well, just and goes, I hate yeah. it. And I, and I, I really uh, reject where I said, I, I, I said this, yeah. I spoke with my parents. I was like, this is something, what do you do? This was for me. This was a very, and then maybe this is why this is, strikes close to home for the same reason. Not that they call me a piece of shit, but what if I were to say, oh, that lesbian producer piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> because it's an oppressed class. It's the same language. Exactly. It's yeah. just that it's okay. It's brand friendly to say it to right. this guy, even yeah. though the truth is it's a minority viewpoint on YouTube by design. But this was an, my not crisis of faith. Uh, though you can call it that, was when I had and I lived in New York and I had done stand-up and I got into the Just for Last Festival and I'd done a few films at this point. I'd done Arthur, I'd done a lot of commercials. And I was in Los Angeles and I had this conversation with an agent and um, there was a point where I realized, hold on a second, everything that I ever thought that I wanted, which was just to either do stand-up or just be a professional actor, I don't know that I can do this. Since that I don't know that I yeah. want to do this anymore. And I remember telling my dad, I just, I don't know that I'll ever play well with others when the others are these people yeah. right. in this state, in this industry, I don't know that I can do it. Um, and that's when I went back to stay with my family for a little bit. And I actually said, give me six months because like, you have to get a job if you're not going to be in Los Angeles. And I had, right. I had left a film set. It was called To Save a Life in Oceanside, California. It was a Christian film, but it was the only Christian project I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Could have gone back to Los Angeles. Uh, I had an audition lined up. Instead, I drove back to my family because I wanted nothing to do with that industry at that point. And unfortunately also sometimes working with Christians in the industry, you have a little bit of a blast of cold water. Yeah. Um, and my family said, well, if, okay, if you're not gonna do it, then you better start doing stand up and you know, stand up more and when you're here, start working. I said, give me six months, let me try the YouTube thing. I think I can do this. Yeah. And the second I came out with more conservative leanings, I had my manager drop me as well. And yeah. all of these cards just came tumbling down. And uh, thank God, thank, and I mean this, I mean thank God, thank Christ, I don't mean that yeah. in the Irish Catholic, no, I mean I know. Thank, thank Christ that there were some companies that came by. There was yeah. BJTV at the time and Fox News and Dennis Miller. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. At that point, it was Dennis Miller, Michelle Malkin, Andrew Breitbart, um, and Sean Hannity, Neil Cavuto were the people who kind of took me under their wing and had me on their shows. Where they're like, oh, yeah. here's a guy who's relative, and Alan Combs, to his credit, yeah. uh, who had me on these shows to express my point of view because it was unique enough. And I said, oh, maybe I can do this. But I would have had to accept the fact that everything I'd worked for, I wasn't going to be able to do because I had to face myself and realize I can't work in this industry right. well, at this stage in my life. And yeah. it, you had worked in, in that industry since you were a kid. 12 this years wasn't, old. This wasn't I something- I spent a lot of time being tutored on set, yeah. Yeah, this wasn't something that you just kind of picked up later in life and said, I'll give this a try. This was like your lifelong aspiration, right? Mm -hmm. This is what you wanted to do. And I remember kind of early on in our friendship, like there were plenty of opportunities for you to go, 
this is just not worth it. Like I'm swimming against the grain so much that it would have been very easy against for the you. current against the current going against, against the grain. The grain? I think cut, I can, can cross cut, those cut metaphors, mixed metaphors, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so you can, you know, you the, cross the grains, you yeah. turned your yeah. leaves <laughs> and the tree and things, yeah. but you very easily, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you could have very easily walked away or, you know, said, I'm not going to really participate in conservative media anymore, and I'm just going to have a viewpoint that's much more center, so I'll get a lot more. Well, that was another thing, too. You know, you know that with conservative media, I had some raw deals. Well, yeah. And I could have. <laughs> Even blamed, amongst your own. I, yes. And I didn't blame the ideals, and I right. certainly didn't blame the Christian yeah, ideals. Exactly. Um, I understood that this was a byproduct of, of imperfect interpretation or application by man. Yeah. And that's what I remember. The last time, the last time that I remember crying as a man outside of uh, like a death. Um, or was uh, in a, a conservative company, which shall remain nameless. I think you guys know where they had me working there full time for a long while and was really angling for a contract. And they said, yeah, me, I met up with them. And at this point, I was married. And they said, but uh, you're going to do it for free. You're going to do it for the exposure. We're not going to pay you. Ugh. And I was at a crepe place with my parents. And I remember just sitting there. I had to leave. And crepe? I was just like, crepe place. Yeah. I don't even eat crepes. This is how I remember it. <laughs> yeah. And I just left. And oh. I walked out. And I kind of knelt down behind a dumpster. I remember just like, just that kind of like a big just yeah, sobbing because yeah. I had been doing yeah. it for five weeks full time and I thought I was moving towards something and it was just yeah. pulled off the table and I had a good friend at that time who didn't even go into bat for me who knew it was wrong and I remember my dad just saying hey we're at this point this was the guy who said you better start working yeah and I said give me six months I'll do the YouTube thing and at this point it was a flip where he said hey you don't need them do your own thing and that yeah. was the moment yeah. where I got the rights to this show and I know listen this isn't it's not like this is some some unbelievable, you know, uh, hallmark film success case, but I am grateful for what we have and I'm able to make a living and everyone here is able yeah. to make a living and it's yeah. blessed a lot of people and I consider it uh, uh, very much a blessing to me. And my dad said, you don't need them. You can yeah. do this. And he said, and I, I know, I believe in you. And uh, at that point, I've, I've always tried to draw closer to God. And I'm not very, the reason I want to be clear too about this and I want to go back and you guys can wrap up because you make much better points than I do. The reason that we didn't do Mass Monday for a long time, and I've always been very open about my faith, but I didn't feel comfortable um, doing this kind of a format is because I am not an expert at all. Um, like I said, I've read through the Bible multiple times because I had a one year Bible. I've yeah. gone to church. I've been a part of a small group. I do a devotional every day. But I, when I, I love sitting at the feet of experts in anything. That's where you see when I sit down with Daniel Cormier or someone like a George St. Pierre on the show and fighting just athletics. I'm like, oh my God, or Brian Shaw, who's a yeah. strong man, even though yeah. I don't follow strong men. I'm like, I just want to sit here and listen. Thomas Sowell, I go, I want to oh, yeah. sit and absorb everything. That's the same way I am with theology and, and issues of God. And I know that I'm not an authority. I'm not claiming to be an authority. Um, so I've always been very uncomfortable until yeah. someone who works here said, hey, you know what? He was sort of a Christian. We know smooth, smooth Manny, but not yeah. really. And said, like, this has helped me. And it's actually good to see very imper imperfect people yeah. taking this. And that's all this is. This is very imperfect people who do not claim to be experts at all um, taking a stand for what we believe is right, in spite of it maybe not being very popular. Yeah, and really just having a conversation about this, knowing that it could cost us. Yes. You know, knowing that it could be an unpopular opinion to to say something like, hey, we just don't think Red and Link's story really lines up with, with reality a lot of times, right? Yeah. We, there could be blowback from that. We understand that. Uh, but at some point, there's a... There, there's, you mean like being called a piece of shit? Yeah. One of the things that <laughs> yeah. And I don't even care. I just want to know what the memes were they talked about after. I, I've only you seen go that watch clip, and I really, video. I will. I just don't want to contribute to the. Don't watch. And it. I want to be clear. I have no problem with that. No. It is well within their right. I saw the ride. I bought a ticket anyway. I have been, I have a segment called "What a Piece of I'm, Shit." Yeah. Yes. And we've applied it both to Don Lemon, but Brian less than Stelter, like ten times, as right? well as the World Health Organization. We so did. We I am an not casting any stones. Yeah. It's okay if you cast some stones at us. Just just back it up. You should hit me with a boulder. I know, right? You should push a button and an Acme anvil. Just bonk. I'm fine with it. And I know you said it on the show, but it was hilarious. Before the show, she was like, yeah, she called me a piece of shit. And I was like, oh, man. And he goes, no, no, it's totally fine. I I'm just curious why. I'm curious yeah, to why she thinks so. Yeah. Like, you weren't curious like, oh, I, I want to know why. You're like, I'm just curious like which thing she thinks made me a piece of shit that I said. I just want to <laughs> know like, why. Yeah. 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 So, and I, and I, <laughs> And I think we have we have what another. I was trying to. Did yeah. you have any points you wanted to make there? Yeah, I was just going to say that, that that what you were just talking about is an illustration of why you should stick to your principles and and not yeah. just principles broadly, but the truth and why why knowing that you're committed to the truth is the most important thing and not just finding some organization or some company and saying whatever your loyalties are those are my loyalties. Yeah. It's actually having standards outside of some kind of corporate loyalty that makes you 
good on, it makes you good for these platforms or not right and then that that's much more important and well, the it, truth right now is there's some sort of a tugboat that yeah. somehow <laughs> comes <laughs> tugboat out there it's come ashore what is it's that true. i don't think i can hear like yeah. it's one of those duck things that has the wheels I, on we're the not bottom. even near an airport but no. then every now and then you just get a Big plane sorry you yeah. <laughs> well no i mean the, the the philosophy that you said wade it's not like we're just espousing this because it's good for faith Think about yourself in, in this Certainly way. not good no. for views. <laughs> right? <laughs> think, about, think about this, like bucking bucking culture and bucking trends. What if you're in an office where it's it's acceptable within that office all the guys to do sexually inappropriate things to women, right? right? To, right. to grab them and to say things. And you're like, oh, well, I'll just go along to get along kind of thing. No, you have to stand up. You have to have a backbone. You have to have principles that apply in all parts of your life. We're not all perfect. We're not always going to stand up when we should. And hopefully we'll kick our own butt and go, you know what? Next time I'm going to say something. I'm going to intervene. I'm going to do the right thing, whatever it is. This applies to every part of your life. If you have no standards, if you have no spine and no backbone, you will just let anything happen. And we don't want that for anybody. We don't want people to be sexually assaulted at work or harassed at work. We don't want any situation like yeah. that. And we also don't want people to kind of curtail their speech because they think yeah. that this is the popular thing and, to say. And this actually brings me back, and it kind of brings me full circle back to the point uh, of view that I have changed. And uh, people, you can go back and you can see this is actually, I think, from our very first show ever that might have been, our very first live show that was, I believe, at Virginia Tech. It was either Virginia Tech or SMU yeah. I believe that was compared Tech, to yeah. U of M or A&M, uh, where people asked about, hey, I'm in an industry where everyone is very liberal, or people say, you know, I want to go to the entertainment industry, what should I do? And my answer used to be, listen, if you have like uh, Gary Sinise money or Bruckheimer money, let your freak f flag fly. And if not, yeah. um, I can understand keeping yeah. your head down and uh, hoping to get to a position where you can influence people for the better. So I can understand being silent. Keep, if you want to keep your mouth shut, that's okay with me. And I've changed that. And I've yeah. changed that response. And because at first I thought I was offering an answer and I thought, well, you know what? I can't sort of copy paste myself into that situation because I know that I wouldn't be happy doing yeah. that. I know that I wouldn't be able to do it, but exactly. some people can. And then I realized that people are going to smell it on you anyway, and that's if it's, if it's your political worldview or if it's your uh, worldview as seen through the lens of faith. Yeah. People will smell it on you anyway, and I don't believe that anyone whose fundamental principles, and this is why now I say you got to just be honest about it, be open with it, and uh, you know, we've always said we can't, maybe you're not a shark, but you can be a puffer fish, you can be a porcupine, yep. you can be the poison yeah. dart frog where they just really wish they hadn't tried to take a bite of you because <laughs> they feel really sick. I think that yeah. anyone whose who's, who's convictions truly mean anything or define them could not feel good about themselves or happy in putting their head down and keeping quiet as long as it advanced them career-wise until yeah. they got to a point where they felt like they could speak up because you never really get to that point because there's always another no. rung on that ladder. Yeah. And so that is a viewpoint that has changed just because I have seen so many, and you can take a who's who of people who've been successful in this movement and fallen, or some people who've become successful through modifying their worldviews. When you change your fundamental worldview, when you change your principles, your foundational principles, as an appeal to popularity, as a spiritual argument or an intellectual argument, it truly, not only does it not hold water, but it leaves you empty and it leaves you unhappy. And it just takes different people, a different timeline to admit it and figure it out. And that's why we're doing Mass Monday. And that's why we're talking about this and the idea of being brand safe and popular, if that's a part of a Christian worldview, because it's not, it's never been. And you can look at the founder of the feast, Jesus Christ himself, he was never liked by everyone. He was hated by more people than he was loved. And I think at the end of this, when you look at what their worldview is, Rhett and Link, and I would have really welcomed them on the show and we'd keep it obviously respectful and speak in love. Um, you look at what they've done, how they've benefited, but you also have to look at what it has cost. And I think this is a pretty candid clip right here um, from Rhett and Link that sort of crystallizes that. Whatever it is that, we're, that we are right now, I call myself a hopeful agnostic right now, but. I don't have the structure or the community or the singular sort of well-defined purpose that I did. And that is, that, that's a problem. I'm not trying to paint that, listen, it's not like I got, I'm about to give you some philosophy that I live according to now that's got, that gives, that, that gives me community purpose and meaning. I don't have that, okay? Um, I think there's a giant sort of shift that's happening culturally and I think that we may be arriving at that sometime, but it doesn't exist right now for me. But what does exist is an openness, is this curiosity. I kind of saw Christianity emptiness. as this boat mm -hmm. in a very stormy sea. It's stable, there's a lot of other people on it. It's got a destination, you're gonna get through this. 
It gives you something to hold on to. It gives you stability. It gives you purpose. It gives you direction. And it gives you community. And when I jumped ship, I didn't jump to another boat. I jumped into the water. And I pulled my wife and my children. Or you in jumped into me. a boat with holes in it. I jumped into a sea of uncertainty. And that's where I've lived for about six years. But what happened to all that community and the people who caused you to jump ship when you became a part of this cool kid social club at YouTube? The streamies not mean anything? Do the keynote addresses not mean anything? The lunches with Susan Wojcicki not mean anything? Being brand, having 1,700 videos from your own admission, that, uh, none of which are brand unfriendly? Does that not mean anything? How is, how is that a sea of uncertainty and not just another boat? I'm confused. Um, I'll leave it with this, Luke 9, 25. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses himself? And that's why we've uh, tried to take this on and do our best job possible for a bunch of, bunch of YouTube hacks uh, with yeah. a, <laughs> a semi-popular <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Uh, I hope it's uh, been insightful, illuminating, or served you well. We'll see you tomorrow.